Hi, welcome to this Corp Maths video. In this video, we're going to look at the video solutions to the questionnaires, practice questions. If you need any extra help on questionnaires, if you go to corpmaths.com forward slash contents and scroll down to video number 268, there's a video tutorial there on questionnaires. Alternatively, you could scan this QR code. But in this video, we're going to focus on the video solutions to the practice questions. So let's get started. So let's have a look at question number one. So question number one says, George wants to find out how much money people spend on coffee. And he uses this question, how much money do you spend on coffee? And he's got four response boxes and they are five pounds to 10 pound, 10 pound to 30 pound, 30 pound to 50 pound, and over 50 pound. And we've been asked to write down two criticisms of this question. Now you can actually see quite a few criticisms of this question. First of all, in terms of the question, it says, how much money do you spend on coffee? But there's no time scale. It doesn't say how much money do you spend on coffee each week, each month. So, you know, people might be thinking, you know, how much money do I spend coffee each week or each month or even over the course of their lifetime? So the, the question's a bit vague, so it should include a time scale. Also, in terms of another mistake, if we look at these response boxes, we've got five to 10 pound and 10 pound to 30 pound. So if I believe that I spent 10 pound a week on coffee, would I tick this first box or the second box? And likewise, for 30 pound, I could tick this box or this box. So the categories overlap, so they shouldn't overlap. They should be clear in terms of either if it's 10 pound, I should tick this one or I should tick this one. Also, in terms of under five pound, there's no box for under five pound. So in terms of our criticisms, the first criticism that I've written down is the boundaries overlap. So in terms of the 10 pound, it could be either this box or this box, and likewise the 30 pound. Another criticism that I've written down is the fact there's no time scale. Is it a week, a month, a year, and so on? Um, so there's the two answers. Now, I did say I wrote down two criticisms, but I'm going to list three because you may have chosen two out of these three. And another one is the fact there's no option for not pound. So no money up to £4.99 so there's nothing for below £5 a, a week or a month or whatever the time scale would be so there's nothing for below £5. Okay let's have a look at part B. So part B says design a better version of this question and to include response boxes. So in terms of the question I've written down how much money do you spend on coffee each week? So in this question I've given a time scale each week and in terms of the response boxes I've written down not to £4.99, £5 to £9.99, £10 to £14.99 and £15 or more. So those boxes, they cover all options and they also don't overlap. So for instance, if it's £5, you're going to tick this one. If it's £10, you're going to tick this one and so on. And then if we carry on, we're told George asked 10 people in his class, explain why this sample may not be reliable. So George asks just 10 people in this class. Now he wants to find how much money people spend on coffee. Now, first of all, in terms of this 10 people, they're all of the same age, all in his class. So the fact that all the people in his class will be a similar age, there's no variety of in age. So for instance, younger people may not drink as much coffee as someone who's a bit older. So that's why his sample may not be reliable because it doesn't include a range of ages. Okay, okay, let's have a look at our next question. So question number two. Question number two says, Aidan wants to find out people's opinion on a new road being built. So there must be a new road being built and Aidan wants to find out people's opinion on it. And this is his question. A new road will cause a lot of traffic for the village. Don't you agree? And the options are yes, maybe unsure. Now this question is a leading question. It says, don't you agree? So a new road will cause a lot of traffic for this village. Don't you agree? That's a leading question that he's trying to get people to agree with him. And then also in terms of his response boxes, we've got yes, maybe unsure. There's no option for no. You know, someone may disagree and say, well, the new road won't cause a lot of traffic for the village and it might actually improve the traffic. So write down two things that are wrong with this question. One option is the fact that Aidan's asked a leading question. He's saying, don't you agree? He's trying to influence the responses. And also, there's no option for disagreement. Someone can't disagree with him using his options, either yes, maybe, or unsure. So Aidan clearly doesn't want people to say that the, the new road won't cause traffic. Okay, let's carry on. Part B says, design a better question. So this is the better question that I've written down. I've said, do you think a new road will cause an increase of traffic in the village? So do you think that a new road will cause an increase of traffic in the village? And here are my response boxes. I've written yes, unsure, no, no opinion. And that means that either people can agree with the question, so they do think that it will increase the traffic, or no, they can disagree, or they're unsure, they're not entirely sure, or they've got no opinion, so maybe they're not from that village or they don't know the area. So that's the, the better question that I've written. Okay, let's look at our next question. 
So question number three. Question number three said, Mrs. Martin wants to open a new restaurant in her town. So Mrs. Martin's going to open a restaurant in the town. And she wants to find out what type of food people in her town like. So she wants to find out what type of food the people in her town like before she opens the restaurant. And we've got a design a suitable question that she could ask to find out what type of food people like. So the question that I've written is, what type of cuisine do you prefer? What cuisine do you prefer? Or what type of food do you prefer? And then I've got some options where we've got Indian, Chinese, Italian, Mexican or other. And here with these response boxes, we've got a selection of boxes that they could choose and then we've got other so that if it's not one of the options we've listed then they can write their own so that's the question that I've written okay then we carry on Mrs Martin posts the questionnaire so we've made this questionnaire she's going to post this questionnaire to 100 people chosen at random across the country and we've been asked to explain why that's not sensible now Mrs Martin wants to find out what people in her village like what type of food the people in her village like now she's posting this questionnaire to 100 people across the country so she'd be very lucky if any of those questionnaires are received by the people in her village so explain why this is not sensible well the restaurant has been opened within her town it would not be sensible selecting random people across the country that are unlikely to dine in her restaurant because if she's choosing people across the country, it's not going to be focused on the people within her town. She asks her friend, do you agree that curry is better than pizza? So give two reasons why this is not a good way to find out what people in her town might like to eat. So she asks her friends, do you agree that curry is better than pizza? We were asked to explain, give two reasons why that particular question is not a good way to find out what people in her town might like to eat. So first of all, it's a leading question. Do you agree that curry is better than pizza? You're trying to get the people to say yes, that curry is better than pizza. Another problem with that question is there's no option for alternative responses. We've got curry and pizza. What if she wants to find out what people in her town like to eat and it's not curry or pizza? It might perhaps be they prefer fish and chips or they prefer Chinese food and so on. And another problem is she's only selecting her friends. She's not selecting people from the entire town. Her friends may not be representative of the entire town. Her friends may be all of a similar age. Um, she may have met her friends in a in a restaurant and they, they've all met through that particular restaurant that they love. Um, so you know, just choosing her friends may not be the best way to find out the opinions of the entire town. They may not be representative. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number four. So question number four says, the manager of a cinema wants to find out how often people go to the cinema. And she uses this question on a questionnaire. So she wants to find out how often people go to the cinema. And the question says, how often do you go to the cinema? A month. Well, that's good because it's got a time scale, a month. And then we've got some options, a lot, often, many times. So the response boxes aren't necessarily the best here. We've got a lot, often, many times. Now, looking at the question, the question itself, how often do you go to the cinema a month? That question is actually quite good. Um, but I would include some numerical boxes. I would have some options where they've got you know not to three times four to six times and so on so part a says write down what's wrong with this question well the options are vague and too similar so the three options the three response boxes are too vague a lot often many times um a lot to someone might not be very often to somebody else um also the fact they're very similar a lot often many times <laughs> she obviously wants people to say yeah we go to cinema loads and then if we can scroll down then a better question for the manager of the cinema to use so i've used the same uh, wording of the question how often do you go to the cinema each month and then i've got not to three times four to six times seven to nine times or ten or more times and with these response boxes there's something for everyone to tick they may not go to the cinema so they'll tick this first one they may go eight times a month so that might be this one they might go 200 times a month and then that would be that one and um, so there's uh, obviously a box there that everyone can tick and that's it Okay, let's have a look at question number five. So question number five says, Clark is going to take a survey of the films watched by students. So he wants to find out the type of films watched by students and he wants to design a questionnaire. And part A says, design a suitable question that he could use to find out what type of films students watch. So the question that I've written is, what genre of films do you watch most often? So what genre, what type of film do you watch most often? And I've put down some options, so action, comedy, drama, horror, romance, and, the, and I've also included a box for other, so that if there's another type of movie that I've not listed, that they can tick that and then write down what that is. And then it says, Clark uses this question on his questionnaire, so let's go down and look at what question he's used. How many films have you watched? A little, a lot. Well, that question is not very good at all. How many films have you watched? Well, I, I can barely remember what films I've watched last month, never mind how many I've watched in my entire life. Um, so how many films have you watched? And then we've got a little or a lot. Um, again, they're not not numerical they're very vague a little a lot that they you know someone's little maybe someone else's a, a lot so they're a bit vague so we've been asked to design a better question to include response boxes so i've written down 
how many films do you watch per week? So maybe on average, how many films do you watch per week? And then I've put down some numerical boxes, not to one, two to three, four to five, or six or more. And then again, with those response boxes, there's something for everyone to tick. And also I included that time scale in the question, how many films do you watch per week? Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So question number six. Question number six says, Mrs. Jackson wants to find out how much pocket money students are given. And she uses this question, how much pocket money do you receive each month? So this question, it says, how much pocket money do you receive each month? So it's got a time scale, that's good. And then we've got naught to five pound, naught to 10 pound, 12 to 20 pound, and over 20 pound. And we've been asked to write down two criticisms of the response boxes. If we have a look at these response boxes, we've got naught to five pound and naught to 10 pound. They overlap. If I received three pound pocket money, I could either tick the top box or the box below that. So there's two boxes that I could tick for the same answers. So that's not good whenever you do that in a question like this. Now also, if I received 11 pound worth of pocket money, which box would I tick? There's no option for 11 pound. So the two criticisms that I've written down are, one, there's overlapping options. The naught to five pound and the naught to 10 pound, they overlap. Also I've written down the fact that there's no option for amounts between £10 and a penny to £11.99. If I received £10 and a penny, which box would I tick? If I received £11.99, which box would I tick? There's no option for me. Okay, um, so we've been asked to design a better response boxes below. So these are the response boxes that I've chosen. Not to £4.99, £5 to £9.99, £10 to £14.99, £15 to £19.99, and finally £20 or more. And again, with these response boxes, this is something that everyone can tick. Okay, let's look at our next question. So let's have a look at our next question, question number seven. So question number seven says, John wants to find out how much people spend on Christmas presents. And we've been asked to design a question for his questionnaire to find out how much people spend on Christmas presents each year, include response boxes. So here's our question. How much do you typically spend on Christmas presents each year? So how much do you typically spend on Christmas presents each year? And then in terms of response boxes, I've written down less than £100. £100 to £199.99p, £200 to £299.99p, £300 to £399.99p, and £400 or more. And again, we've got our response boxes. They don't overlap. There's a, you know, each of the boxes are separate. So if I, you know, for instance, spent £400, I would take this one. If I spent £75, I would take this one, and so on. And uh, yeah, and that's it. So that's question number seven. Okay, let's have a look at question number eight. So question number eight says, Cameron wants to find out how many televisions people own. And he uses this question in his questionnaire. How many televisions do you own? One to three or four to six? I've been asked to write down two different things that are wrong with this question. So let's have a look. So the first thing that I've said that's wrong with the question is there's no option for someone who may not own a television. So if someone didn't own a television, there's no box to tick. There's no option for no televisions. Likewise, there's no option for people who own more than six televisions. So if someone owned 10 televisions or seven televisions, where would they tick? So that's something that's wrong with that question. Okay, that's it. So let's have a look at question number nine. Okay, let's have a look at question number nine. So question number nine says, Bethany wants to find out the amount of time people jog a week and she will use a questionnaire. Design a suitable question for Bethany to use in her questionnaire and include response boxes. So the question that I've written is, how long do you jog for each week? Give your answer to the nearest minute. So rather than sort of considering seconds, I've said just give your answer to the nearest minute. And these are the options. I've written down 0 to 29 minutes, 30 to 59 minutes, 60 to 89 minutes, and 90 minutes or more. So the question I've asked is, how long do you jog for each week? So we've got that time scale each week. How long do you jog for each week? And I've also said give your answer to the nearest minute. And by doing that, I'm not having to worry about the seconds because they just give the answer to the nearest minute. And these are the options that I've given them. 0 to 29 minutes. 30 to 59 minutes. So I don't have to worry about in between 29 and 30 minutes because I've asked them to give it to the nearest minute. So not the 29 minutes, 30 to 59, 60 to 89 and 90 minutes or more. Okay, let's look at our last question, question number 10. So question number 10 says, Charlie wants to find out what students think about school. And for his sample, he asks 10 year seven students. And we've been told this sample may not be representative of the entire school. Explain a reason why. Well, the fact that Charlie is only including year seven students in the sample is a bit of an issue. He's not including a range of ages. It may be that year seven students love school or they're very enthusiastic about school. So they may be likely to give positive uh, responses about school. Or it could be that year seven is quite nervous about joining a new school and they may not be able to give as high responses as maybe some of the year 10s or 11s who love the school. So it's the fact that he's only asking just year sevens. And Charlie wanted to find out what students think about school. So he's probably best off asking a range of year groups. And this is a question that he uses. He says, what do you think of chemistry? 
excellent, very good, or good. Now, Charlie obviously loves chemistry, and his options are excellent, very good, or good. So write down one thing that's wrong with that question. Uh, there's no option for someone that doesn't like chemistry or that dislikes chemistry. Um, so the fact that these answer boxes, they only include the positive responses. And then we're told that Charlie wants to find out how many hours students revise for their chemistry test to design a suitable question. So we've got to design a suitable question to find out how long students revise for their chemistry test. And this is the question that I've asked. I've said, how many hours did you spend revising for your chemistry test? Now, because of this question, people may give their answer minutes or seconds and so on. I've decided to say, give your answers to the nearest hour. So that way, they're only going to give their answer to the nearest hour. And these are my response boxes. Not the two hours, three hours to five hours, six hours to eight hours, or nine or more hours. So there's something for everyone to tick. If they didn't revise, they'll tick this top one. If they revise for 15 hours, they'll tick the bottom one. If they revise for seven hours, they'll tick this one and so on and by saying give your answer to the nearest hour i'm not having to worry about like two hours and one second and so on because they're going to be giving their answers to the nearest hour and that's it so these have been the video solutions to the questionnaires practice questions if you need any extra help on questionnaires if you go to courtmath.com forward slash contents and scroll down to video number 268 there's a video tutorial there on questionnaires but again i really really hope you find this video useful and if you have found it useful please like it and please subscribe to the youtube channel thank you cheers bye